What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training. And today we're going to be breaking down a great wide receiver IQ test for you guys to kind of take and follow along with this video. So I hope this video helps you guys out. How this is going to work is I'm going to be showing a clip from like kind of a pre-snap read um, view and you guys are going to, I'm going to give you guys a chance to answer one of the questions that I ask. Then I'm going to play the clip full speed and break down the correct answer of the question. So I hope this video helps you guys out. But also fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to improve your route running, your speed, your overall game this offseason, we are going to be traveling out to six different states across the country for two day long quarterback and wide receiver training camp. So if you guys are local to Columbus, Ohio, Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Utah, or Los Angeles, California, and want to get some work in with myself and my staff of coaches, check out that very first link in the description below. It's a two day long camp covering everything. It's eight hours total. So I hope you guys could check that out. Very first link below. Let's get started with this video. So first things first here, first question I'm going to ask. Like I said, I'm going to show a pre-snap clip. I'm going to ask you guys a question, give you a chance to pause the video and think about it, then we'll go over it. So how would you guys run? And mind you where we're at, this is the goal line right here. So how would you guys run a corner route versus this specific coverage of this DB? So he's lined up about two yards off and he is going to be outside shade. So how would you guys run a corner route when the DB is two yards off outside shade? So you guys can go ahead and pause the video, think about what kind of answer you would give, think about what you would do, and then we'll go over it. So you guys can go ahead and pause the video. And now we're going to break this thing down. So how would I run a corner route versus this look? And the main thing that you have to ask yourself before you go up into any kind of situation, pre-snap, um, you know, uh, watching film, you got to think about why is the DB playing a certain way, right? So this is an outside wide receiver and you see where the hash mark is, right? So obviously our split is what? Our split is cut down. So anytime that we have a reduced split like this, this DB is probably going to be expecting an outside route because a lot of the times what offenses do is they'll cut the split down to the wide receiver to run, you know, a 10 yard out to run a corner like so maybe to run like maybe just like a strip maybe sometimes they'll run a drag but when he's outside shade he is trying to protect the outside he does not want to give let you give get the outside he does not want to give up the outside release so if you try to force the outside release he's going to get hands and wall you to the sideline so if you said something like square him up give him a crossover take the outside release restack and go that's not going to happen because a good db will not give up that leverage now if something that you said was i want to attack his leverage. I want to attack his outside shoulder, his midline, threaten him outside because that's where he doesn't want to give up, move him off the platform, then take the inside release. You would be 100% correct. So let's play this thing full speed because this is exactly what he does in this situation. So he attacks him outside, takes the inside release, works to restack and gives a move at the top of this break. So a lot of guys think that every single time you run an outside breaking route, you got to take an outside release. That is not the case, fellas. That's the whole point of me even showing this clip is to show you guys that he will not give up the outside. That is his sole purpose. He is outside shade also because he has safety help to the inside. So his goal is to force you to that safety help, not let you run around him because he doesn't have any help out there. So if you can threaten him to where he doesn't want to go, if you could threaten him to the outside where he doesn't want to actually let you go, that's going to move him off the platform. He will do whatever it takes to prevent that from happening. And that's when you could get some separation. Now, I know everybody's probably thinking, well, if I got to run a corner route, what if he doesn't move? What if he plays it well? What if he's hip to hip with me? That is when we do something called a throw by technique. So if you were right here and let's say this DB was over the top slightly, you didn't have a step on him. He was hip to hip with you. You would take your right hand and you could swat him by at the top shoulder, his hip, but anything to use his momentum and throw him upfield so we could slip back underneath. Our plan is obviously to restack. Our plan is to take the inside release, get over the top and throw a move. But sometimes that DB plays it well. And I got to make sure that I have a reactionary plan as well as a primary plan coming off that line of scrimmage. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys kind of understand that. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. So if you guys said attack is leverage outside, take the inside release and work a move or throw by, you would be correct on this. So now, how would you guys against this specific look, right? So DB is inside shade about two to three yards off. I'd say well, maybe about like a yard and a half, actually, like a yard and a half, two yards off inside shade. And you have to run a three step slant. This is the look. So three-step slant time. So you guys can go ahead and pause the video, think about what you would do, and then we'll play this thing full speed and break it down. So go ahead and pause the video. Now we're going to break this thing down. So if you got this inside shade guy and you have to run a slant like so, 
Um, the main thing that you want to understand is that you cannot just do the straight up diamond release off the line. There's too much of a gap between you. So anytime that there is a gap, anytime that there is a, you know, space between you and the DB, you have to close that space. So if you guys said, oh, I'm just going to do a diamond release to the outside. I'm going to take three hard steps on a 45. He's going to commit his hips. Then I'll slip back underneath and run the slant. Now, that would be incorrect because there's too much space between the two of you. So if you just ran to the outside right now, let's say he does jump, you still got to get to the slant. So he's got a lot of space to recover. And that extra space means extra time. And he's got, a, he's got enough time. Trust me, if you don't close the distance with him. So you would want to make sure that you close the distance first before you do the diamond. Now, I know a lot of you probably also said this, or maybe some of you also said this. I would attack his leverage, give him a move to the outside like a crossover, get him to jump, and then slip under. But again, it's very similar to that outside shade that we just talked about. He's inside shade now. He will not give up the inside. He is solely inside shade to stop you from running a slant, to stop you from crossing his face. So if you try to just square him up and attack his leverage, and that's the only plan of action you have, he will weave to the inside, keep his leverage, and you'll end up running that slant right in to him. So we have to threaten him with the fade, but we have to close the distance first. So let's play this thing full speed. So this receiver closes distance hip to hip with him when he is selling vertical, fellas. That makes it a much harder recovery for this DB. So comes off the line, attacks that leverage. He's just closing the space, make the DB uncomfortable, step on his heels. Now you see in this exact situation why you wouldn't want to just attack him and then make a move and try to cross his face. Because what does he do when he attacks him? He moves him off the platform. He keeps his leverage to the inside. You wouldn't be able to just run the slant like that. So we have to threaten to the outside. And remember, it's a three-step slant, so we have to keep that timing with the quarterback. So when he attacks on that diamond release, those three hard steps, one, two, three, look how close he is to this DB. There's not much of a gap, if any of a gap. He is what I like to call hip-to-hip -hip with this guy. Because when you could put the brakes on, you could sell, and he's fully committed, and you're right there, he, he can't recover if you're out of this break fast. Now, if it was the same scenario and he's maybe two yards this way and he still has to get to here, that DB could easily recover because he has more space to. So make sure, fellas, when you have to run that slant route against that type of look, two yards off, inside shade, close the distance first, then work back up to the outside on that diamond. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job by this wide receiver showcasing this kind of hesitation hop release and being able to break this thing right off in stride. So now, the last clip what we're going to do is I'm going to show the clip full speed and I want you guys to um, tell me what you think the wide receiver could have improved on. So this is a little bit different style than what we've done in the past, but um, I'm going to play it full speed. Then I'll give you the chance to think about your answer, what you would, what you might say if I were to ask you that question. So the question we're going to focus on is what could the wide receiver have done better? This ultimately works, but what could he have done better? So let's play at full speed. So he comes off the line, same kind of scenario that we just looked at, but obviously I don't think this is as good of a route. Now I'm going to play it one more time. What do you think he could have done a little bit better on this? So go ahead and pause the video. I'm going to play it slow motion one time for you guys to see. Go ahead and pause the video and think about what this guy could have done a little bit better to create space. Okay, so let's break it down. So now, First things first, when you got this inside shaded guy and you have to run this slant route, and we just talked about this, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to close the distance, right? Now, this wide receiver kind of does that, right? Like he does the, the, he tries to do, I should say, the release that we just saw where he hesitates to the inside, does that little hop, right? Attacks the leverage and then bursts back outside on the diamond. Now, the only problem is there is a huge gap between the two of them. Now, this DB, I think, is very undisciplined. You see how his eyes are very high. He's looking at the wide receiver's upper half. That's not going to do much. You got to focus on the hips if you are a DB to stay down. Discipline, but I think if this DB is a little bit more disciplined, this route does not work. And if he keeps his leverage, right? Because you see, as soon as he comes off the line, what does he start doing? He starts backpedaling. That's given this DB all the space in the world. If he would have just kept his leverage to the inside, attacked him, but he pers pushes back up vertical and there's too much space between the two of them, DB's got him all day, right? So we just got to make sure that he doesn't backpedal and get on his heels right away when he doesn't have to. Because the mistake that this wide receiver made is he didn't close the gap enough. Look at his release off the line. You see how it goes lateral? He doesn't even cross the line of scrimmage. So the problem with that when you go lateral like so is that you're not threatening him. You're not closing the space with him. So when you burst up on that diamond release, there should be too much of a gap. This DB should be able to recover easily. But because he wasn't disciplined with his eyes, he wasn't disciplined with his technique, we could make him look bad. So I think this was more so like a DB not playing things super well rather than a good route. I think, so if you said,
he needed to close the distance a little bit more when he attacked his leverage, that would be 100% correct. If you thought it was something else, maybe that's not necessarily wrong, but that's the main thing I was looking for. You have to close space anytime that that DB is an off coverage like so. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Again, right idea, just have to make sure that we close the distance and then let's threaten back vertical. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If um, you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We uh, always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys as usual. And again, fellas, if you'd like to come out to one of our six off-season camps in six different states, check out that very first link in the description below. We're coming out to Columbus, Chicago, Dallas, Nashville, Salt Lake City, and Los Angeles. So check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out. I'll see you guys next time.